Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I am back with part two of three parts of our Urban Mech Shootout. The most serious of shootouts you will ever see in Battletics. Now last time we looked at the UM R60. This is the R60L and essentially what you do is you take off some armor and you take off that auto cannon that is probably already too big for this mech and you put an even bigger auto cannon on. Seems like genius. I mean, the survivability can't get any worse, right? Or can it? Uh, an AC-20 is pretty devastating, but will this thing survive to get in range? I don't know. What I do know is that the battle value on this one is a little bit cheaper at 470, so you save yourself about 30, 35 BV. Um, it was produced a little bit later in 2925. I believe this is a house Liao design. Uh, you can, uh, you, you lore buffs can correct me on that one. Um, movement, heat, all the same. It jumps, not very far, but it jumps. Um, all the all the stuff is standard, engine, gyro, all that stuff. And then armor-wise, we're down to four tons, uh, and we're down to an armor factor of 64. So we went from like 88-ish percent coverage on the R60 to about 61% on this R60L. Uh, and unfortunately, it takes it from just about everywhere, including those arms. Um, speaking of arms, there is no lower or hand actuator, so you can arm flip with this thing, essentially a 360 degree arc of fire with that nasty AC-20 that's hooked up, uh, but that's about all you get. Um, backing up that AC-20 is a small laser, and one other thing, ammo, only five rounds. Like, will that be a, a, like a game changer for this thing? I don't know. I mean, you only get five shots with that AC-20. Could be, uh, could be big. Uh, so, why don't we dive in? We'll take a look at all the benchmarks. Uh, we'll talk about it. We'll see how it does. Guys, stay tuned. Urban mech action coming your way. Well, here it is, uh, the R60L. I am, <laughs> I'm not too impressed, but it's interesting. So I really thought this thing was gonna suck a lot worse than the R60, um, and it still may, mainly because, you know, the AC-20 takes longer to get into range and it only has five rounds. But what's interesting is the the damage, right? The basically the optimized damage, which is the same as your baseline, which is the same as the red line, because you can't you can't overheat in this thing. Um, it's only like 5.6 points of damage less over 12 turns. So it's interesting. Like this thing takes a little bit longer to get into range, but is delivering more. So what that tells me is that if you can start this thing closer. If you can, you know, if you're using hidden units and all those types of rules, or, you know, um, if you can actually navigate successfully to get into range before you get blown to tiny pieces, um, this one might actually work out a little bit better um, than the R60. That's just first blush. Let's talk about lethality. So this thing is definitely a little bit more lethal than the R60. Um, it's killing the javelin about 2% more by turn 12, and it's shaving it another full two turns off your average time to kill. Um, critical hits are, are very low. Damage per hit is higher. Obviously, the AC-20 is pretty nasty. Um, so that's basically what we've got going on there. Um, this does have, again, decapitation potential um, more so than the AC-10. Um, not sure if, if that's how you want to, you know, you want to you wanna bank your, your, your mech force building strategy on the fact the urban mech R60L can, can take off a head, but it's worth something at least. Um, let's take a look at the armor, the distribution, the defensive. I'm curious to see if we can get any lower. I mean, the last one, the R60 was at 0% survivability. Um, I imagine this one's going to be the same, if not worse, but let's take a look. All right, here it is. Uh, so survivability, shockingly, is the same. In fact, the survivability curve almost looks identical. Um, what's interesting is ammo deaths 
are really unchanged. I mean, it's the same sort of distribution. I mean, even though you're running out of ammo faster, you're also holding it longer because you can't shoot it um, until you get into that nine inches. And, you know, one of those rounds is going to probably nuke this thing, you know, right from the, from the side torso all the way through um, to the CT. 20 points of damage is quite a bit. Um, armor diagnostic, it is, it's much more balanced than the R60 in the sense that you can see the yellow bars, which represent the expected distribution, meet with the green bars almost everywhere except for the rear um, and the head. So, you know, the armor is well balanced, but it's very, very low. I mean, being at, you know, 60% armor on your arms where your, you know, your main gun is, it seems silly. Um, but I guess they had to make do to make space for that AC-20. Um, motive hits are generally the same. I think they're, they're, they're slightly higher, but you know, within, within reason. Your average target mod, I think on the R60 was 0.55. This is 0.51. You know, again, it's all, it's all generally in the same ballpark there. Um, they're slow. We get it. And because of that, they do get hit a lot. Um, we didn't really talk about that in the R60 analysis, but I want to call it out here. That slow speed, right? I mean, the, the, the jokingly awful plus zero on a walk and only a plus one on a run, plus one on a jump, um, it makes you so much easier to hit. You know, think about trying to hit an annihilator. This is the same. The only problem is this thing has far less armor um, and is far more volatile. So um, that hurts this thing quite a bit. Now, let's talk about efficiency next. Uh, the R60 was at like a 1.96. Will this, you know, will this unseat it? Will it be worse? Let's find out. Well, it's most certainly worse. Uh, it is a 0 0.27, 0 0.27 on the efficiency there. Uh, again, we're looking at a survival rate of 0%. Um, that means in 10,000 simulations, this thing survives 0% of the time to 12 turns. So it looks like it survives 0% of the time past like turn nine. Um, what the what the challenge is for this mech is the way the benchmarks are set up. You are basically deleting all of the short range damage, and that's where this thing does the most damage. So the R60 was able to deliver some damage early in the benchmark, where this does absolutely nothing outside of nine hexes. And so by the time you get close enough, guess what? You're much easier to hit and you die a lot faster. You've already been taking a little bit of damage on the way in. So this thing is just not really able to get the gun to bear uh, to do the damage um, that we saw in the, in the baseline ACD. It was a 96.7% damage loss. Um, I don't think, there's definitely nothing higher than that. That's the worst we've ever seen. Um, so what that tells us is, you if you're gonna feel this thing, you absolutely cannot expose it to enemy fire until it's in range. I mean, period. And I know that's like, uh, duh, but like you have to be extra careful with this thing or it is literally, you're just handing your opponent 500 battle value and giving them an advantage. Um, gunnery sensitivity is extremely abysmal on this one um, because again, the range brackets are so tiny, you're in so tight, like you're not really seeing a gain. I mean, you can spend 823 um, <laughs> to put a gunnery zero pilot in this thing, and you're only doing 3.67 points of damage as the benchmark goes. Um, I mean, this thing really just is not a performer because it's so fragile uh, and you need to be so close in order to do damage. And guess what, guys? At a speed two, speed three, like it is not getting in range. It's not gonna easily close that gap unless you're gonna go like, breach a door or like shoot a turret or something that doesn't move. I mean, this thing really just is never going to get in range of that AC-20. But uh, I will suspend my disbelief and let's talk about threat and rolls. All right, so for rolls and threat, um, I mean, definitely a brawler. There's no other, I mean, this has no range and it's slow. I mean, it's about the only thing you can do with this is just put it in and hope to God um, that it's able to do some damage and, and maybe sneaks by unnoticed. Um, there's really not a whole lot to say. Again, it can flip. You've got 360 degree arc of fire. That is really good. Um, and that's about it. I don't know. 
Uh, you know, will the R90 be better? I'm not really sure. Um, it's, uh, I have not looked at the heat profile very closely. I haven't actually dug into the stats at all. So I'm going to be going in cold, um, to that one. So guys, keep your eyes open for that. That'll be dropping soon next week at the latest. Um, and try to get these urban mech ones out to you in rapid succession. Um, but that's it. That's the urban mech. That's the R60L. If it were me, I would take an R60, uh, over the R60L. I think the R60L definitely in last place at this point, unless the R90 can, uh, can somehow, uh, be even worse, but urban mechs never disappoint guys. That's one thing I've learned. Uh, so that said, don't forget to head over to Aries games and minis. Uh, Derek's awesome. He's got all the goods. If you're new to battle tech, uh, and you need a fix and you need to know where to get your stuff, uh, Aries games and minis, they have the minis, the books, the dice, the novels, um, they have terrain. They, they partner with a whole bunch of other companies, Hardware Studios, uh, Steel Warrior, Death Ray. There's a whole bunch of companies. He has the Felder phone cases for storage, um, Sage Print Labs, which we which we featured a little while ago. Some of their aerospace fighters in a battle report. Great stuff over at Ares Games and Minis. Definitely check it out. Uh, and if you want to help Death from Above War Gaming out, guys, you can first subscribe, second leave a like, third leave a comment. All that's free. Um, and if you want to go a little further and help us out, you can leave us a super thanks, which is essentially a tip on the video. Um, or you can come on over to Patreon. There's three tiers, $1, $5, $10. Every tier has different perks. There's also an elite tier uh, if you are an elite person. Uh, and there is uh, some extra benefits there, uh, strategy roundtables and things like that that we do. Um, so pretty cool stuff. So if you want to help us out, every dollar counts. We appreciate it. Uh, but that's it. All done marketing. That's all I've got. Another urban mech is on the way. Uh, and guys, stay tuned because as you know, always good stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.